1975 was the year Nyandara North MP Josiah Mwangi Kariuki was assassinated. On the morning of March 1st, a bomb exploded at the bus station of the East African Road Services Company, located at Racecourse Road in Nairobi. 27 people were killed, more than 100 were injured. Rumours would start going around the city that J.M. Kariuki was among those who perished in the bomb blast. True, Kariuki was in fact dead, but he hadn't died from injuries caused by a bomb explosion. He had been shot several times at close range and his body left out in the wilds of the Ngong Hills to rot or be eaten by wild animals. News of Kariuki's murder was received with shock throughout the country. At the University of Nairobi, students rioted. In March, Parliament set up a select committee of 15 chaired by Bungoma East MP Elijah Mwangale to investigate Kariuki's murder. Throughout April, May and June, the committee would hear evidence from witnesses. And as it did so, Gikuyu, Embu and Meru Association, Gemma leaders, among them Nakuru North MP and Gemma Organising Secretary, Kihika Kimani, were holding a highly publicised series of rallies in Kiambu, Nakuru and other parts of Rift Valley Province. The rallies aimed to quash rumours that linked Kariuki's death to Kenyatta, his Minister of State Mbiyukoi Nange, and generally the government. As it turned out, the report that the Mwangale Select Committee came up with blamed the police for undertaking a massive cover-up to conceal the identity of the killer or even being involved in the actual killing. One police officer who the committee wanted to further investigate was the head of the General Service Unit, Benjamin Gethy, whom some witnesses claimed was the person last seen with Kariuki before the latter went missing. When Mwangale tabled his committee's report and asked Parliament to adopt it, three front benchers, Minister for Works Masinde Muliro, his Assistant Minister John Keane, and Assistant Minister for Labour Peter Kibisu voted for it. They were promptly relieved of their jobs. In October, Worse fates would befall Butere MP Martin Shikuku and Tinderet MP Jean-Marie Serone when in taking issue with the aggressive attacks Gemma had mounted against MPs over the Kariuki issue, Shikuku claimed that Gemma was trying to kill Parliament the way it had killed Kanu. Deputy Speaker Serone, who was in the chair at the time, sided with Shikuku when Kihika Kimani challenged Shikuku to substantiate his claim. The following day, against all parliamentary etiquette and in full view of shocked MPs, plainclothes policemen entered the precincts of Parliament and whisked Serone and Shikuku away. On October 24th, Vice President Daniel Arab Moy's Ministry of Home Affairs confirmed that the two had been detained under the Preventive Detention Act. After that, Parliament was cowed enough to amend the constitution in December and give the president powers to forgive anyone found guilty of an election offence. Kenyatta used those powers to forgive his former Kapenguria colleague Paul Ngay following his conviction for an election offence that had cost him his Kangundo seat after the 1974 general election and disqualified him from standing for any election for another five years. A grateful Ngay would go on and regain his seat in a by-election held the following month. That year, Kenyatta released from detention another Kapenguria colleague, Achieng Oneko, who was among members of the former opposition Kenya People's Union, detained when the party was banned in 1969. In business and commerce, 1975 was the year the World Bank approved a 140 million Kenya shilling loan towards the construction of an oil pipeline from Mombasa to Nairobi, and another 441 million Kenya shillings for the construction of a hydroelectric power station at Gitaru on the Tana River. It was also the year that the Uchumi supermarket chain was established.
Besides J.M. Karyuki, Kenyans said farewell that year to Elizabeth Mwenda, former president of Maendeleo Yawanawake, who died at the Aga Khan Hospital in Nairobi, and Dagoretti MP Johnston Mudiora, who died while visiting India. <laughs>